I am so thankful that this morning, the message that God has entrusted to me to share with all of you, it is really corresponding to the worship experience that we just had when Pastor Angeline led us into high praises to God, into dancing, singing, prophetic proclamations, because I believe God is restoring prophetic worship to His church. God is calling His people back into the heart of prayer and worship, seeking the face of God, crying out, ascending to Zion. Somebody say with me the word ascend. It is time to ascend to Zion. It is time to ascend. People of God, I want to share to you this morning, the title of my message is Encounters with the Men of War. This is a statement that the Lord gave me entering 2024, that this year, in this season moving forward, you and I are going to encounter God as the man of war that He is. And I found that line where the Lord is mentioned as a man of war, and we're going to look later on in the book of Exodus, but first in the book of Revelation chapter 15. Then we'll see it in Exodus chapter 15. On the morning of April 9th, 2024, I know the sound is still being adjusted. Please do so quickly. On April 9th, 2024, in the morning, on the way to the early morning prayer, I shared this with Dr. Stephen on Wednesday. I heard a phrase in my spirit. The Lord says that the church is entering into a time of showdown or the beginning of showdowns. I heard that when I was coming out of my house entering the car to go to early morning prayer so i got curious and the dictionary definition of the word showdown it's as a final test or confrontation intended to settle a dispute i believe with all of my heart that the lord is about to reveal himself and show himself in such a way that the church first and foremost and the world will no longer have any shadow of a doubt in their mind that He is the one true living God and that there is no one that is like Him. But the church needs to be so convinced. The church needs to walk in the reality of who He is. It is not just an understanding because we are Christians and we go to church. It is not just because of traditions. But it is because we experience and we encounter Him as the one true living God. The Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart just as the Lord dealt with the gods of Egypt in the same manner in this hour. The Lord will once again show forth Himself and throw down the gods of this present generation. Just as the prophet Elijah had a showdown with the 850 false prophets of Asherah and Baal. In the same manner, the Lord will show forth Himself as the one true living God, the unchanging one, the unstoppable one, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody say amen. amen. Do you know that Prepare Conference 2024, it is so strategically positioned by God? That April 18th to April 20th will be two days before we come into Passover 2024. It is important. Things are about to shift and this conference has been positioned by God for us to assemble ourselves, to ascend to Zion. So we got to change our mentality. When we come to conferences, we come to receive, not this conference. You have not come to be told. You have not come to hear or be curious of what God is going to say next. That's not this conference. This conference is a call to ascend. This conference is a call to participate. This conference is a call to engage. This conference is a call for us to assemble together that God's army in heaven is going to come together with the army of God that is on planet earth. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Watch this. First of all, open. Before we touch Revelation chapter 15, please open 1 Kings chapter 18. Verse 21, if the mic is not going to settle, I'm just going to hold the handheld. Should I hold the handheld? Okay. First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. The Bible says, and Elijah came near 
to all the people and said, watch this, right before the showdown on Mount Carmel began, the prophet Elijah addressed the people and the prophet said, how long will you go limping between two different opinions? I want you to underline the word limping. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. You know, when the Lord had me study the word showdown, and I came to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, I was very curious with the word limping. I want you to underline that word. In the Hebrew, that word limping is the word pasa. It's the same word as Passover. Passover is P-E-S-A-H, Pesah. But this word limping is P-A-S-A-H, Pesah. But it has the same root word and it means crossed over. When I read this scripture, the Lord made me to understand why did he say that we are now in a time of a showdown? Because you know what? God has passed over your sin and my sin through the perfect sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. But the harsh reality the church has not passed over. You have, passed, you have not passed over your doubt. You have not passed over your own opinion. We are so sometimes pulled and we stand on two different boats. Sometimes we trust God. Sometimes we believe in God, but yet we choose to walk in our own ways. We choose to walk in our own wisdom. But in this hour in which we're living in, the Lord is having a showdown with the gods of this world. And the church must decide if you are going to worship Lord God Almighty Jehovah, then the church must be wholeheartedly steadfast in the Lord, having faith in God and in God alone. Can somebody say amen? We cannot limp between two opinions anymore. God wants us to pass over. In this Passover, it is important for you and I to make the final decision in your heart. Whom are you going to believe? Who are you going to follow? Whose words are you going to hold on to? Yesterday, the nation of Iran attacked Israel. The church should not be shocked. And when the service began... Pastor Stephen asked an interesting question. He said, why do you think when Israel is under attack, then everybody calls for prayer? But when any other country gets attacked, the response is not the same. Do you wonder why? I replied, Pastor Stephen, I said, sir, I think it's because of fear. Because the world knows that Israel is God's timetable. Something happens to that land, your life will be affected. Something happens in that land, the book of Revelation is triggered. Isn't that sad? We only respond because of fear. We respond because we are unsure. We respond because we are afraid that the calamities that is happening in the Middle East, it will spill over, and you and I will experience it. We should not be praying only when calamities happen. Because prayer is not an initial response because of a crisis. The Lord is teaching the church to go higher, to ascend, and to abide in God. When the church is abiding in a lifestyle of prayer, then the church will not be easily shaken because what is happening in the world? Because the church is beyond what is happening in the, nat in the natural because the church learns to ascend and to see from the perspective of heaven. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, in the book of Exodus chapter 12, when God had a showdown with the 10 gods of Egypt, when Elijah had a showdown with the false prophets of Asherah and Baal, you know what is at stake? You know what is the, the target? You know what is the consequence of the war? The war has always been about worship. What is happening in your life, the trials that are going, you are going through, the enemy that is trying to challenge you, it is not about your health, it is not about your children, it is not about your finances, it's not about your family, it's about whom you will worship. 
that's what's the war all about. The war is about worship. The war is about who will you make as God and the supreme one in your life. Is it self? Is it your own problems? Is it the gods of this world? Or is it almighty God? When Elijah had a showdown with the false prophets, Elijah said, if you would worship God, then you follow him. What was the battle all about in the land of Egypt? Because Moses said, we want to go to the wilderness so that we can worship our God. The battle has always been about worship. So when issues starts to sprout in your life, when the enemy is challenging you one way or the other, don't be distracted with what you see in the natural Posture your heart and say, Lord God, I will choose to worship you. Because the moment we worship Almighty God, then it is not you and I who's fighting the enemy, but God is fighting your battles and my battles. Somebody say amen. Revelation chapter 15, verse 1 to verse 4. The world is about a she is showdown. Almighty God is not going to be mocked. Almighty God is not going to be mocked by those who call themselves the church. We talk like the church. We think like the church. We act like the church. But we are not the church. But those who are with God, we partner with God. Your life and our, my life has to reflect our walk with God. That's why victory is guaranteed. Those who are with God, they will walk victoriously. Somebody say with me, victory. You have to get used to the word victory. Because the church of Jesus Christ walks in victory. When you walk in victory, your family will walk in victory. All areas of your life will reflect that victory in God. God is taking us higher in worship. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 15 verse 1, Then I saw another sign in heaven. Great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is finished. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire, and also those who had conquered the beast and its image, and the number of its name, standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. I want you to pay attention to what this verse says in verse 1. The Bible says, and I saw another sign in heaven. I'm telling you people of God, if you want to conquer in these last days, you have to see what God is seeing from heaven. John saw a sign in heaven. What is that call? It is a call to ascend. It is a call for us to receive new signs so that we may see. And these signs that are found in heaven can only be accessed through a life of prayer. The Lord is inviting the church to come up to see in the spirit realm because a witness, a sign is coming to the witnesses. You and I cannot conquer in these end times with old testimonies. You and I cannot conquer in these end times with old experiences with God. With the new battles that we're going to face in the days to come, God is inviting you and I to ascend to His holy hill because He will show you great and mighty things and fresh encounters from heaven will release the ammunition that you need to face the battles that are ahead of you. Another sign is appearing before you in these last days, in this end time. People of God, God wants us to be fresh in Him. And it says in verse 2, And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire. And also those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hand. You know, when I was reading the scripture, suddenly the Holy Spirit told me, look at the passion translation of it i don't refer to this translation a lot but something caught my attention i will read it for you in the passion translation the bible says verse 1 and verse 2 of revelation 15 the bible says then i witnessed another great and astounding astonishing sign in heaven seven angels bringing the last seven plagues for with them the wrath of god is finished then I saw what looked like a vast sea of glass blended with fiery flames. Watch this. Standing beside the sea were those who continually 
conquer the wild beast, his image, and the number of his name. Oh, look at that. Those who continually conquer. I'm telling you, people of God, the church cannot be only strong when the signs of the last days starts to take place. The church cannot only be strong when world events is causing us to shake like a leaf. But the Bible is telling us, but those who are victorious with God daily. Somebody say with me daily. Those who conquer the wild beast, his image, and the number of his name continually. So I'm telling you and I'm declaring in Jesus' name that there is a constant, continual anointing that God is making available to you. That you can walk in victory day after day after day after day. Because the victory that you win today will pave the way for the victory tomorrow. The win the victory that you win tomorrow will pave the way for the victory for the day after your tomorrow. Somebody say amen. Somebody say with me continually. God wants us to continually walk in victory. Continually conquer. If you want to be strong for what has to come in the last days, then you have to be strong now. You cannot say, I'll be strong when this happens to me first. I'll be strong prayer gets answered first. I'll be strong with my wife is standing with me. I'm telling you, be strong today because your strength today will pave the way for the strength that you will need tomorrow. God wants you and I to be strong continually. The song of Moses. There was prophetic worship going on in heaven that signals the harvest that was happening on the earth. The song of Moses spoke about God's deliverance, God's power to deliver his people. The song of Moses spoke about how harvest begin to come and God is going to get a people that will be saved. It speaks of mass salvation and it, it proceeded because there is worship that is rising up in heaven. The Bible says, please go back to the ESV version. Verse 1. The Bible says, I saw another sign in heaven Great and amazing. Do you know that you and I are called by God to be a sign and a wonder to this world? And the Lord wants you and I to walk in the greatness of God, in the amazing things of God. Write this down. What is great? Great means doing big things for God. Why is the church being called by God to go deeper with Him? Because I'm telling you, having Sunday service, having Wednesday service, having Tuesday morning prayer is not enough. You serving at church like a cycle is not enough. Volunteering at church is not enough. Going through religious cycles is not enough. God desires for the church to do great and mighty things for him in these last days. The word amazing, astonishing, it means causing others to marvel. Your life has to inspire others to want to follow you because they know you're following the one true living God. The song of Moses is a song that is birthed from testimony, not because of professional music. Prophetic worship begins with your testimony. If you have a testimony... That testimony can become worship before God. That's worship. Worship is not the lyrics. Worship is not the music. Worship is not the sound. All of that is good. It's the vehicles of worship. But worship must begin from a life that is testifying of the greatness of God in your life. People struggle to worship when God is doing nothing in your life. You'll go to church on Sunday dry... You don't know what to sing because you got nothing to give thanks for. If your Monday to Friday is lousy, how can you say thank you, Jesus, on Sunday? Thank you what? If your weekday is not full of miracles, on Sunday you'll be lousy. Why? Because God is doing nothing. And it's all just lip service to God. But I'm declaring in Jesus' name that's about to change. The church is about to have a fresh testimony from heaven. Every lie is about to do great and mighty things for God, causing others to marvel. And they say, I want to follow your Jesus because Jesus is doing something wonderful in you. Great and mighty things. And it begins when we ascend higher, when we go deeper, when we have encounters with the heavenly realm. 
Harvest is coming, people of God. Last week I shared with pastor, I was in Dover, New Hampshire. With a church of 150 members. I said to them, you wanted to kill me in three days. They wanted to preach seven times. On the second night, after the message was given, I called the worship team up. And suddenly the Lord Jesus stood there. No song was being sung. And from seven-year-olds to 70-year-olds, they were weeping in the presence of God. I never experienced that in my ministry before. Where the Lord Jesus would just walk, he will go to each individual. And he'll say, the service is now mine. Now you pray for the person that you see me touch. And you say what you just heard me say about that person. So I had a wonderful time just standing there. Just waiting for the Lord to go from one individual. And he'll just jump to different places. He didn't go row by row. He'll touch individuals in different points of the room. And they will be weeping even before words were spoken over them. Kids, seven, eight year old, they were crying and they don't know why they were crying. Jesus was in the room. Can somebody say amen? amen. God wants you to do mighty more things like what Ms. Anna shared and Miss Rebecca. When you are in places praying for people, physical healings will begin to take place. Because I said to the Lord, it is not enough that God, you just call out sicknesses by words of knowledge, but the healing never took place. When we were doing online Bible study, the Lord would call out, I'll see someone's neck, and someone would write to our ministry. I was that person. I had that neck problem. This number two, this number three. Then I said to our staff team in Indonesia, ask, did the healing manifest or not? And sometimes not yet. And I say, why not yet, Lord? Something is wrong. Why would you show and not heal? If the Lord would show, it means the Lord will heal. The church cannot just be satisfied just because of displays of words of knowledge. God calling out things accurately. It's not about that. It's about the testimony of God's power. It's about the testimony of God's healing touch. And more will take place. But I want you to understand that God will do great, astounding, amazing things through your life. Can somebody say amen? But you have to climb higher. You have to go higher. Seven angels with seven plates, which are the last. For with them, the wrath of God is finished. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire. This is interesting, people of God. What is the recipe? What is the recipe of prophetic worship? I, I just want to go through these four verses line by line. You know, when I, when I saw this scripture, the book of Revelation speaks of an event that will take place in the future. But there are some principles and truths that you and I can extract and apply in our lives. You know, in the natural realm, a sea of glass, glass and fire cannot mix. You heat up glass to a certain point, it will break. But the Bible says it appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire. I want to give you two ingredients of prophetic worship. Are you ready? Number one, what is that sea of glass speaking of? It speaks of what is fragile. What is fragile in your life? What is fragile? It's not the anointing. For many years, we have heard many preachers, all they talk about is pursue the anointing. Pursue the anointing. No. You know what is more precious than the anointing? Your heart that is set apart, consecrated to be more like Jesus. Humility is the key ingredient of worship. The fire of God speaks of what? The anointing. You need both. You need humility. The life of Christ. The character of Jesus. And you need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Why is this conference this coming week important? By my spirit. I want you to just declare it over yourself. Say by his spirit. You need his spirit in your life. Because without the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do what God has called us to do. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we will only be natural and not supernatural. Those who conquer must have a heart, a life that is consecrated before God. Walking in humility but endowed with the promise of the Father. His Holy Spirit that will empower you and I. 
and those who had conquered the beast and its image and the numbers of its name standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. I want you to pay attention. You know, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 that God has given us the armor of God. And I found in Revelation chapter 15, there is another weapon, another instrument that God says it belongs to me and it's called the harp of God. And I believe that this weapon is given to the last day's church in addition to what is given in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. The harp of God speaks about prophetic worship the weapons of your warfare is that when you ascend when you pray when you worship you unleash the power of heaven and heaven will manifest on earth can somebody say amen look at that an additional weapon has been given by heaven for you it's not the harps of men it's the harp of God prophetic worship is worship that is desired by God and not just worship offered by men. We can offer something to God. And it, how do you know that it's pleasing? We cannot force God to be pleased with what we offer him. Prophetic worship is driven by his heart. Can somebody say amen? God is teaching us to worship him in the right way. And that will release the manifestation on earth. As it is in heaven. Go to the next verse. The Bible says this. And they sing the song of Moses. The servant of God. And the song of the Lamb. Oh, watch that. A song that was sung in the Old Testament. And a song that was sung. Fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. The church will no longer argue in the days ahead. Oh, you're walking in Old Testament theology. Oh, you're walking in Old Testament thinking. No. This song is the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. You know what we are going to be? We're going to be all that God has designed us to be. And it is He will be known as the God of all ages. Where the old and the new will come together. And what is the song? It's as great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God. The Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nation. The song of Moses, the song of victory that Moses sang, is, a, is an answer to his own prayer. You will read that Moses asked the Lord, show me your glory, Lord. And Moses also prayed and asked the Lord, show me your ways, O God. And the Lord answered his prayer. How is his prayer being answered? By a generation that will rise up. Walking in the glory of God. A generation that will rise up. That will know God in a privilege given. Not known by any other generation before. I was humbled when reading the scripture. Do you know that you and I who are living in these end times. We are given the privilege. To be the answer to the prayer that Moses cried out to God. A generation that will know the glory of God. We will walk in signs and wonders. To declare of his majesty. To declare his greatness. That has no expiration. At the same time. We are called to be an answer to his prayers. A generation that will walk in the ways of God. A generation that will prioritize becoming more like Jesus. As the desire of our hearts. More than anything else that we can desire in this life. And the Bible says in the next verse. In verse 4. It says. Who will not fear O Lord. And glorify your name. For you alone are holy. And all nations will come and worship you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. You know what is the coming revival? The coming revival will not just be people accepting Jesus. The coming revival will not just be people rushing to get baptized. But the coming revival will be those who come to know Jesus will be transformed to become true worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth. The coming revival is the revival of worship. The coming revival is when people are so in awe, in love with Jesus, that they want nothing else except Jesus. That they desire Christ. More than anything else. The Bible says for your righteous acts 
have been revealed. God wants you and I to ascend in this hour. The church has to move in a new sound of worship. A life that is victorious. You need to know that an invitation is given by God in this hour to go higher. God is saying, do greater things for my glory. Make other people marvel, not at you, but at me. Declare my greatness. Declare my goodness. Can somebody say amen? Because when the righteousness of God's people is revealed, when the righteous acts, or another translation says, the blessings of God that is made manifest, the blessings of God that is made evident in your life and mine, when the nations, when people don't know Christ, when people who don't know the goodness of God, they see the goodness of God in you, they see the greatness of God in you, the testimonies of the working of God is flowing out from your life, the salvation of many will come. Amen. You and I have that power. You and I have been given that privilege that through your life you can become a living testimony. That your testimony will bring the salvation of others. You know, on Tuesday morning prayer, Pastor Stephen began to open the book of Jeremiah chapter 33. And I read that scripture. I want, you, I want to read one verse and that is in verse 9 in Jeremiah chapter 33. And that gave me the idea of how Revelation chapter 15 verse 4 will look like. When the nations will come to God because of His righteousness that is being made revealed in you and I. This is God's promise. And I'm praying this promise over my life. The Lord says in Jeremiah 33 verse 9, And this city shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, a glory before all the nations of the earth who shall hear of all the good that I do for them. Watch. They shall fear and tremble because of all the good and all the prosperity I provide for it. In other words, do you know that the blessings of God, the provision of God, the glory of God that manifests in your life will put your enemy to flight. The devil will tremble, not because you use your sword, not because of your weapon. When you live a blessed life, the enemy runs away from you. Oh, man. When you are blessed, the enemy flee. When you prosper, you destroy the works of the enemy. Look at that. They shall fear and tremble in these last days. So now understand this concept. If the church in the last days will run away like chickens and ducks hunted, how will the world know that Jesus is alive forevermore? If the church are going to be cowards in the last days, How would the powers of this world know that our God is unmatched? When you and I walk in the blessings of God, when you and I walk in the goodness of God, when you and I walk in the prosperity of heaven, your enemy will flee from you. What an awesome call by God for us to walk victorious with Him. People of God, I want to encourage you. Shakings and more shakings will take place. But when God is having a showdown with the gods of this world, be those who say, I believe and trust in you, O God. I'll see the greatness of God. I'll choose to believe and trust in you. I'll choose to worship with everything that is within me. As you and I ascend higher with God in this hour, we will become the living testimony of the greatness of our God. Now open your Bible to the book of Exodus, chapter 15. We are in serious time. The church has to wake. Uh, the church has to arrive. And you and I are being equipped, prepared. We need encounters. Encounters come to those who seek God and worship Him. I thank God in this church, God is calling us deeper into the lives of prayer and worship. Two components that is needed for us to have encounters with Almighty God. Just this week, especially the Christian world in Indonesia has been rocked by a new doctrine that is coming out called progressive Christianity. 
is actually originating from America. Where you, progressive Christianity. Where you don't believe that the Bible is the absolute word of God. That the Bible is not relevant to some of the issues pertaining to this generation. So the Bible needs to be open. It needs to be interpreted in an open way. Salvation is not through Jesus. That's what they say. But God is calling a church to arise in this hour. And you and I cannot win the battle because we argue. We cannot argue. We need to show and manifest the glory of God. Amen. The church needs to walk in the supernatural because the supernatural, the manifestation of the glory of God is the answer to this world that is crying out for truth in the midst of the heresies and the false doctrines that will be sweeping rampant in these last days. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 15 verse 1, I, I love this, watch this. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord saying, I will sing to the Lord. Somebody say with me, I will sing. Look at that. Such boldness that will arise in the church. I will sing to the Lord. Worship is not ruled by your emotions. Worship is not when I feel like it, when things are happy. You need to decide, I will sing to the Lord. That's worship. Worship is not emotion. Worship is an offering that you made with God. No matter what you're going through, you are determined. You are bold. Prophetic worship is bold. I will sing to the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Look at that. What is going to challenge the church in this hour? The spirit of Pharaoh. What is the spirit of Pharaoh? The enemy will try to lock your destiny. The enemy will cause you to walk in a defeated mindset. That's the spirit of Pharaoh. Bondage. When you start limiting God, you're under the bond of Pharaoh. Pharaoh causes us not to be able to see our destiny. Pharaoh, what does Pharaoh do? Pharaoh imparts a lifestyle of defeat. The enemy will kill your divine destiny. What is the enemy after? Your destiny. What is the enemy after? Who you are to be in God. But what defeats the bondage of Pharaoh when you are determined to worship God? I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Prophetic worship emboldens your faith. When you worship God prophetically, faith is imparted in you. People who prophetically worship God will be those who are willing to make a stand when a stand is needed. Prophetic worshipers will not bow to anyone else except God. Prophetic worshipers, those who worship God prophetically, will make decisive, bold decisions. You got to be bold. Sometimes a lot of people come to church and they can be serving. But the moment an argument comes in your household, your decision starts to crumble. You're easily swayed. My boss said this. My neighbor said that. My wife said this. My husband said this. No. Prophetic worshipers are bold to make a stand for God. I will sing unto the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Emboldened faith. What God has done, He will do it again. When you worship God, you're enforcing the victory. And verse 2, the Bible says, the Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. This is my God. Oh, I like that. And I will praise him, my father's God. And I will exalt him. You know, Moses never knew his father. You know what prophetic worship does? Prophetic worship heals your wound. It restores you. Moses never knew his father. He was not living with his father. He was living in the palace. But boldly, Moses declared, 
this is my God, my father's God. He was inducted back into his divine lineage. You see that? Prophetic worshipers are those who are healed completely. Healed from what? Trauma. Healed from what? Past wounds. You cannot be a prophetic worshiper if you're still haunted by your past. You need to know who you are. You're under the lineage of Almighty God. Your past is irrelevant to God's plan and purposes in your life. Can somebody say amen? And Moses says, this is my God, and I will praise him. Look at that, a conviction of who he is in God and who God is in him. The Bible says in verse 2, the Lord is my strength. Do you know that prophetic worship, I want you to write this down. Prophetic worship empowers you. You see, and prophetic worship will bring transformation in your life. That word strength is the word that is used. When you talk about political strength, when you talk about personal, social applications of strength. In other words, when you worship God prophetically, God gives you the anointing to bring changes in your life. The Lord is my strength and my song. Hallelujah. The Lord is my song. When the Lord is your song, he becomes your testimony. Prophetic worship changes what you speak. Those who worship the Lord prophetically. What does it mean to worship regularly and worship prophetically? Those who worship God prophetically are able to see God in all aspects of their life. See, when you speak, it's a song that comes out to God. Do you want to know if you are a prophetic worshiper? What do you speak of them? What do you say of them? Because what you speak is the song that rises up before God. Moses says, the Lord is my strength. The Lord brings changes, transformations that I need in all aspects of my life. And the Lord is my song. He is my testimony. He's the person that I talk about all the time. He's the very first thing that comes out of my mouth. He's the very last thing that will come out from my mouth before I go to sleep at night. Because he has become my salvation. This is my God. And I will praise him. My father's God. And I will exalt him. Watch that. He says he has become my salvation. When you worship God prophetically, God gives you the anointing to set other people, set, to set other people free. To evangelize, to speak of the goodness of God. So many promises in one verse. The Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. This is my God. I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. Watch verse 3. The Bible says in verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The world is about to encounter Almighty God as the man of war that he is. But you and I must first encounter him as the man of war. He is about to war anything in our life that is standing between you and him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. I want you to see Psalm chapter 24, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. Prophetically, how do you apply God as the man of war that he is? We're introduced to the two names of God in the book of Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. When God is introducing himself as a man of war, the Lord is calling us to become prophetic worshipers. How? Because prophetic worship releases heaven on earth. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O gates. This is a command. This is a command. You got to lift up your head. Stop looking at yourself. Stop looking at your limitations. Stop looking at your own weaknesses. If you want to see God come in, you got to lift up your heads. 
Who's the gates? You and I. You and I are the living portals of heaven. You got to lift up your heads. And then it says, and be lifted up, O ancient door. There's a difference. The first line is a command. You lift up your head. You got to see from God's perspective. You got to look up. You got to ascend. You got to look into heaven. This is an invitation from God. You have to be supernatural people in these last days. You have to walk in the realm of encounters with God. And encounters are not just you entertaining yourself with seeing visions. Encounters must manifest. Because of that encounter, something changes in the natural. Lift up your heads, O gates. And be lifted up, O ancient doors. You know what God is saying? All the promises, all the prophecies, all the things that has been stuck in your life. When you go up and ascend, and when you start looking to God, more than looking at yourself, more than looking at the world, then all the promises of God, all the prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled, it shall open in these days, so that the King of glory may come in. Amen? The King of glory is about to come into this world. The eyes of the nations are about to behold the King of glory. The church, open up. Lift up your head, open your eyes, and see. Verse 8, who is this king of glory? This is interesting. The Bible says the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Write this down, Jehovah El Gibor. The Lord is mighty in battle. Who is this cry for? For you and I. Those that will see the manifestation of the king of glory are those who are prepared and assembled like an army. He is training you and I to war. You are not a church member. You are not a congregant. You are not. You are an army, a soldier, a man, a woman of war in the army of the Lord. Somebody say amen. The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. The first cry is given to the army on earth. And then you go to verse 9. The cry is given again. Lift up your heads, O gates. And lift them up, O ancient doors. And, the king, and the, that the king of glory may come in. But in verse 10, the Lord manifests himself differently. This time, the Bible says... Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. It is no longer Jehovah El Gibor. It is now Jehovah Sabaoth. The Lord of the angel armies. Two armies are being prepared at the same time. The army on earth and the army in heaven. People of God, if you're going to win your war in these last days, you cannot fight alone. You need to fight with the angel armies of heaven. The armies of heaven and the armies of the earth must come together. Somebody say with me together. Collaborate together. And how do you do that? Prayer. Lift up your heads. It's a position of prayer. When Jesus prayed, he looked up to heaven. When the school of intensive prayer is starting, prophetically, God is calling this church to a higher level. It all begins in prayer to ascend so that the army on earth will collaborate and work together with the army of heaven. Amen, church. Amen, church. You and I cannot experience all that God has for us if we are going to live like how this world is living. Your perspective has to change. This is the time for the warriors of God to rouse themselves to battle. And when will all this begin? I believe with all of my heart, prepare conference 2024. So when you come to this conference, you come preparing to worship. When you come to this conference, you come preparing to pray. When you come to this conference, you are preparing yourself to collaborate with heaven. For his kingdom, his will to be established on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? 
The last verse. Go back to Exodus chapter 15, verse 4. And I will stop here. Somebody say with me the word victory. There is victory. And that victory has a sound. The Bible says, Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea. When I study the word host in the Hebrew, it means resources, wealth, army. God is going to shame what the world can offer. What you need is not the connections, the money, the investments. No, because Pharaoh's chariots and his resources, his wealth, his strength, his army is cast into the sea. And his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. When I study that word officers, I want you to write this down. The word officers in the Hebrew, it means high ranking officials. And also watch this, it has another meaning. The word officers, it means instruments of music. What is the war over? Worship. What is the war over? Sound. When Pharaoh and his army sung in the Red Sea, God was declaring an old pattern of worship that is under bondage is done. Now you are going to walk into a new realm of worship. That's why after they crossed the Red Sea, what did Prophetess Miriam first did? She took out the cymbals and the tambourines and they began to sing a new song unto the Lord. Worship rose. The children of Israel never sung a single song to God for 400 years. A new sound went ahead of them when they were marching towards the promised land. The enemy is after your voice. The enemy is after our worship. People of God. God is assembling us. And the Lord is saying, you know, those who worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, when you worship and your worship unleashes the wealth, the treasures, the power, the resources of heaven, then you and I will be used by God to shame this world. When the world says you don't do A, you don't do B, you don't do C, you can't eat, you can't survive, you can't succeed, God is going to supernaturally provide for his people. Just like the children of Israel in the promised land. The Amalekites, the Philistines, the Jebusites, they were wondering what in the world is sustaining these people who are walking through the wilderness for years. And the Bible says even before the children of Israel entered the promised land, the people in the promised land, including those who stayed in Jericho, they had trembled. Why? Because of the goodness of God that was lavished upon the Israelites when they were still on the way. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Encountering Almighty God. Don't miss that. To see God. It's all about worship. Who do you worship? Who will you make your everything in your life? In this hour, God is going to give encounters to you and I. I believe 2024. I myself personally, I've experienced new, fresh encounters with heaven. That I've never experienced before. Entering this year. And that is made available to you and I. Everyone who's willing to respond to God. Amen. So can we believe God together. That when we come to prepare conference 2024 next week. You are enlisting yourself. And you're going to say Lord I'm ready for you to do whatever you want to do. In that conference. I'm going to participate with you. I'm going to worship like I never worshipped before. I'm going to pray like I never prayed before. And I want to encounter you, O oh God. And when you encounter God, our prayer and desire is that when you leave Prepare Conference, you will be a stronger believer, a stronger child of God. New operations of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit will take place in your life. Amen? Not just your personal blessings. You know what? Your personal blessings have already been guaranteed by heaven. When you don't look after it, when you don't look for it, God in His goodness, He will lavish you. Beyond what you can ask, think, or imagine. Amen? Let's stand in the presence of God.